Looking to bring a professional soccer team to the Buffalo area in the coming years, but don't get too excited just yet. Before it happens, an awful lot of stuff needs to be done. Here's two on your sides, Kelly Dudzik. Their vision is a sustainable one. Um, it's given their backgrounds, hopefully an executable one. And you know, if we end up uh, working with them, cool. You know, um, it'll be the next step for us. Nick Mandola is the co-owner of local soccer club FC Buffalo. And the city loves soccer. We're always at the top of Premier League ratings. Um, for us being in, a, in the fourth division, the National Premier Soccer League, we get a good crowd. So um, the potential here, if done well and done with community support in an inclusive manner, is, is through the roof. The sport's popularity is one of the big reasons developers want to bring a United Soccer League franchise to Buffalo. Connecticut real estate developer John McClutchy is working with local developer Dennis Penman to make it happen. There's a big catch, though. The league awarding the franchise is all contingent on a 10,000-seat soccer stadium being built. We have four sites that we're looking at, and um, uh, I, I, can't, I can't disclose those sites uh, because we have confidentiality agreements with each of uh, the uh, owners. Um, but there are sites that are uh, in central Buffalo uh, uh, or very close to downtown. So would Buffalo's mayor support the use of taxpayer dollars for this new stadium? I think uh, we're, we're jumping a little ahead now. The, the thing that I have been requested to do is to help find a location. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. Certainly we're responsible for, 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 for figuring out a way to pay for the stadium. Um, whether there could be a public investment, I don't know the answer to that. We've not spoken to anybody in the city or state about that. If the developers get the franchise, their goal is to launch the team for the 2023 season. In North Tonawanda, Kelly Dudzik, Channel 2 News.